Senator Elizabeth Warren is speaking after ending her Democratic campaign for president. She's outside of her Cambridge home now. Let's listen in. You in the mail. All right. So I announced this morning uh, that I am suspending my campaign for president. Um, I say this with a deep sense of gratitude for every single person who got in this fight, every single person who tried on a new idea, every single person who just moved a little in their notion of what a president of the United States should look like. Um, I will not be running for president in 2020, but I guarantee I will stay in the fight for the hardworking folks across this country who have gotten the short end of the stick over and over. That's been the fight of my life, and it will continue to be so. So, what guidance would you give to your supporters who don't know who to support now? Well, let's take a deep breath and spend a little time on that. We don't have to decide that this minute. And I wonder what your message would be to the women and girls who feel like we're left with two white men to decide between. I know. One of the hardest parts of this is all those picky promises and all those little girls who are going to have to wait four more years. Um, that's going to be hard. Senator, Senator, Senator why do you think, Senator, Senator, Senator? Will you be making an endorsement today? We know that you spoke with both Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders uh -huh. yesterday. Uh, not today. Not, Not today. Senator. I need Senator. some space around this, and I and want to take a little time to think a little more. I've been I've been spending a lot of time right now on the question of suspending and also making sure that this works as best we can for our staff, for our team, for our, our volunteers. So, Senator, Senator, Senator White, I'm sorry. It could be coming, but just not right now. Not right now. Senator, Senator, Senator White, White. I know that your campaign manager, Roger Lau, uh -huh. said on the staff call today that he had no regrets. Do you feel the same way? Oh, I do. I have no regrets at all. It had, this has been the honor of a lifetime. Uh, Ten years ago, I was teaching a few blocks from here and talking about what was broken in America and ideas for how to fix it, and pretty much nobody wanted to hear it. And I've had a chance to get out there and talk with millions of people. And, you know, we have ideas now that we talk about that we just weren't talking about even a year ago. A two-cent wealth tax and universal child care that could be real. We could make it happen. And canceling student loan debt for 43 million Americans and raising Social Security payments. Those are life-changing um, events for people. And we can actually do this. So you, I'm delighted to have been Senator, here and Senator, honored to have had this Senator, chance. Senator, 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 Senator. You know, I was told at the beginning of this whole undertaking that there are two lanes. A progressive lane that Bernie Sanders is the incumbent for and a moderate lane that Joe Biden is the incumbent for. And there's no room for anyone else in this. I thought that wasn't right. But evidently, I was wrong. Senator, Senator why do you what do you think? Weren't able to resonate more with voters and win any states. Uh, as I said, I think that uh, uh, I was told when I first got into this there are two lanes, and I thought it was possible that that wasn't the case, that there was more room and more room to run another kind of campaign. But evidently that wasn't the case. Senator, 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 was it especially Senator, painful Senator, to oh. lose uh, your, own, your home state, Massachusetts? No. I am deeply grateful to the people of Massachusetts. Look, back in 2012, they took a chance on someone who had never run for public office before. They ousted a very popular incumbent Republican senator to give me a chance to stand up on a bigger platform and fight for their families. And I am deeply grateful for that. Uh, they returned me to the Senate in 2018, and I'm deeply grateful for that. They're the reason I'm in this fight, and they're the reason I can I am able to stand here today. No. I'm sorry. Hi, Annie. Hi, Senator Warren. Um, two questions. Sure. I saw you vote um, two days ago for yourself. I did. Could you, um, two things, reflect a little bit about what that was like for you? And then the other question is, could you talk a little bit about the role that you think that gender played in this campaign? Yeah. So, um, it 
was uh, uh, I stood at that voting booth and I looked down and I saw my name on the ballot and I thought wow kiddo you're not in Oklahoma anymore <laughs> uh, that it really was a moment of thinking about how my mother and dad if they were still here would feel about this um, I had gotten a long email from my nephew and uh, how proud his dad, my brother, is and how they were all had their plans to vote and had met other people. And it is, it's these long ties. Um, for that moment standing in the booth, I missed my mom and my daddy. Um, gender in this race, you know, that is the trap question for every woman. Uh, if you say, yeah, there was sexism in this race, everyone says, whiner. And if you say, no, there was no sexism, about a bazillion women think, what planet do you live on? Um, I promise you this, I'll have a lot more to say on that subject later on. Senator, advice to your supporters right now looking for a candidate, what is your advice to them? Obviously, I know you're not endorsing anybody, but what is your advice to them? Let's, let's take a deep breath and think about this for a little bit longer before we all settle in. Senator, I wonder, I've heard you, I've heard you. Senator, it's been a long two days for you, or multiple days, to make this decision. What were you thinking about? What informed? What was the final show? This is the last. You know, a, a big part of it is to think about all the people who turned their lives upside down to be part of this campaign. Um, all of the staffers who moved and worked long hours, gave up jobs to be here, took leaves from school, to think about what works for them. <laughs> this isn't just about me, this is a whole lot of people who were a big part of this, and also our volunteers, uh, to try to think through. For all those people who already have invested so many hours and so much of their heart in the, the, the phone calls and the door knocks and the coming to the office and help clean things up and keep it all going. And thinking about all those pinky promises. You know, I take those pinky promises seriously. So those were the things I needed to think through and how we make all those pieces work at least as best we can for everyone. And one last thing, it's about all the people who are affected by all the issues I've talked about. Whether they got involved in my fight or someone else's fight or even not at all. But however we talk about this, there still is a trillion and a half dollars of student loan debt outstanding. There are still tens of millions of people across this country who one, one bad medical diagnosis and they're upside down financially. There are still mamas and daddies all across this country who can't finish their education, can't take on jobs because they can't find access to decent childcare that they can afford. And I had to think a lot about where is the best place for me to go to keep fighting those fights because those problems don't disappear when I stand here in front of you. Those problems go on, uh, and my job is to keep fighting and to fight as smartly and effectively as I can. Senator, Thank Senator, you. Senator, Thank you. Senator, Thank you. Senator, 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 Sen